Hi, I'm here with Naveed from Go Butler. So for people who don't know, in two or three sentences, what is Go Butler? So Go Butler is your on-demand personal assistant or your on-demand concierge, right? So we want to be your one-stop shop on your phone to get whatever you need, right? So I think we've been seeing that people just have too many apps on their phone, right? It's just getting to the point where it's getting stuff on demand is getting more and more complicated. So having you know a personal assistant or a concierge who you can tell, hey, I want to order food or I want to book a flight or I need a home cleaner that could then direct you to the right service and get it done for you is really what, what, what we are. Great. I think I want to talk a little bit more about how that happens, but first, um, you know, so I've used the, the text messaging interface, which is how you started, but recently you launched an iOS, right? Yes, exactly. So we started nine months ago, we started purely SMS or text messaging base, and a lot of people love it, right? They love that they can just text us and they don't have to download anything, and, it, and it's great. But for, especially for our heavy users who are using you know, the app once or two, twice a week, uh, we want to create a richer experience, right? And the only way to really do that is in a native application, right? So we decided to launch an app and we we're going to be developing more and more features within the app. And uh, you know, for some use cases, there are simpler modules than messaging, right? We believe messaging is great, messaging is super simple, but for some of the use cases, it's actually easier to just you know, tap a few uh, buttons and, and get what you want, right? So the long-term vision is to keep the, keep the text messaging interface but offer a, a richer app uh, uh, in addition to that. And you can use it you know, as you want. You can use the uh, text message interface, you can use the app, uh, you're one user in, in right. the back end. So with the app, can you then still do that sort of open-ended text question or should you then go back to text messaging for those? Absolutely, you can do everything you can do in text mes messaging. Obviously you can also do uh, in the native app. Um, but you can do stuff in addition to what you can do. Uh, for example, you can manage your profile, you can manage your addresses, your preferences, you can send us pictures more easily. We just recently, for Christmas, that people are kind of craving to buy gifts, uh, launch a Christmas gift feature where you can super easily buy Christmas gifts. You just say, hey, I'm looking for a gift, for example, for my girlfriend, and mm -hmm. I want to spend 100 bucks, and we'll give you 10 suggestions you can swipe to, and you just tap a button, and the gift will be on your, on your way. Right, right. So right. to answer questions, absolutely, you can use our app the same way you're using uh, the SMS interface. Right, but again, so with the Christmas example, the idea is that you can then, from your perspective, you can add just a couple basic kind of options, and so instead of having this text message back and forth, mm -hmm. you just kind of set the parameters kind of quickly from the start. Exactly, right, so and as our model, you know, or our AI learns more about every single use case, then there are so many different use cases, right, we're just starting with that, it's going to be more and more, you know, easier for the user to just go through suggestions, right, and just tap what, you know, what we're uh, suggesting to you and make the experience even more seamless. Yeah, and I should say, I actually bought my, uh, my Halloween costume using, this is before the iOS app launched, so I, I used the text message interface, that's and great. it was, um, that's, a, that's actually, I, I like those gift buying and costume buying examples, because that's the stuff where I what don't want to do it. What costume did you buy? Uh, I got um, an astronaut costume, which oh. I was really excited about, because I've always wanted to be an astronaut, and I never had done that for Halloween. And why great. would you use Go Butler compared to just, like, searching the internet? Because <laughs> I was lazy, uh, and to be honest, I think the, the use case was we were, I was at, with a friend and we, were and we were getting drunk talking about going to this party. It's like, oh, I haven't gotten my costume yet. Better text Go Butler and see, uh, and see rather than you know, waiting until the last, and all my friends waited until the last minute, and they didn't have time to go to the store. There was a long line at the store, so it was, it was great, actually. Happy we could help. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, one of the other things I'm curious about is uh, how much of, because you, you mentioned the AI, how much of the you know, messaging or the task is being accomplished by a human being versus the, you know, an algorithm. Yeah, so I mean, the, the short answer is it really depends. It really depends on, on the use case, right? I'm not even saying vertical because it gets as specific as every single query that comes in. So I think, you know, looking at where we started nine months ago, pretty much purely human, right. uh, we've gone, you know, a long way. So one big part is uh, the entire categorization theme, which, you know, a lot of the vertical players don't have. Right. Uh, it's a big problem, which we right. solved, you know, a couple months ago. So now every request that comes in, we have a pretty high precision, uh, precision to tell what, what category, what use case it is. Right. And then it really depends um, how, you know, how sure we are that we're going to give you a great result. The you know, absolute most important thing for us is to give people a great experience. And, and if the probability of that being served by the AI is high enough, it will be purely right. automated. If we believe that our humans that assist the AI or train the AI right. need to be involved, they will be, right? Because at this point, we're really still like, it's super early, right? Like, uh, we want to have, I think, you know, we want to make sure that people have a great experience and you know, just want to come back and use GoButler over and over versus you know, giving people, or giving, I was just telling you about this, 
it's pretty easy to get to 90% precision with AI, but that 10% is really what makes a difference, right? right? And that's what we're solving by you know, adding humans to vet those you know, suggestions or those answers, right? right. So uh, we are getting a lot more efficient every single day, and we are getting becoming smarter every single day, but we're not at the point yet where everything is fully automated, and I think we won't be for, for quite a while, right? But that's also not our goal. We want to make sure that the, the quality is there and that you're happy with the service and with the mm -hmm. experience and with the product. So you were talking about the idea of vertical players, and essentially what you mean by that is, is sort of Go Butler, which essentially you should be able to text for anything, mm -hmm. versus using you know some of these apps, which are maybe like an assistant for shopping or assistant mm -hmm. for this or that. Um, and that's kind of interesting because I think they would argue that by focusing on one area, and they have argued when they talk about it with me, by focusing on one area, they can deliver a better experience rather than trying to, you know, I guess one of the common phrases is boil the ocean. Um, clearly, you think the better approach is to do be much wider and broader. Well, I think that you know. For sure, what we're doing requires more work, um, but we also think it's a much bigger opportunity, right? Because, I mean, our entire argument is to say, hey, we want to replace all these different apps you have. That's kind of the conviction that we have, uh, that this is a purely horizontal game. I couldn't argue for myself why I would have, why I would download another app for one particular use case. It just doesn't make sense to me, right? That's just against to everything that we are we are selling to the user, which is being a one-stop shop, right? So I'm sure you know some of these players can be very successful right. um, in a particular niche, but it's just something awesome. I'm not a venture capitalist who kind of <laughs> say whether that's great or not. We want to become you know the number one player right. in uh, de delivering people a great service across all categories. Right. So I guess my last question is: there are also other services that are trying to do this sort of broad personal assistant. You know, Magic is one. You know, Facebook M. It seems like that's kind of the vision there too. Uh, what is the number one reason why people should use Go Butler over one of these other services? It's a great question. So I think it's our experience in both the product and the tech side, and especially on the operational side and the human element to it, right? So I think we were, you know, one of the first players in the market, and I think at the end of the day, I believe, I mean, you just said it yourself with a Halloween experience, we provide people with great experiences, right, and consistently. And we're actually, compared to Amber product that you can use, um, <laughs> that you don't have to wait for five right. years, right? So um, we believe, you know, we are, even now, the, the, you know, the number one in the industry. I don't know. I